So, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and again welcome to the opening <laughs> ceremony of the G20Y Summit 2015 at this wonderful place and location here at Lake Geneva. I was just educated last night that uh, this hotel originally has been constructed for the uh, King of England, King Edward VII in 1909, and uh, it goes back and has a very interesting and um, impressive history, what took place here at this location, what decisions have been made, so really quite impressive, and I just learned that <laughs> yesterday evening. So the G20 Vice Summit is really a unique opportunity, not only for getting little historical lessons, but also uh, to step out of your BC daily lives to share experiences, best practices, and come up with innovative ideas. Most of you had already time yesterday evening during the reception to get to know each other a little bit better, and that certainly is going to continue for the next three days in which we all are going to be spend time together. I had very interesting discussions yesterday evening with, with some of you, and I'm really looking forward uh, having those discussions today and tomorrow and on Saturday. And we do have a very interesting and comprehensive agenda today, starting in a moment with the keynote speech, followed by an opening panel comprising distinguished individuals, followed by the comedy presentations in the respective comedy breakout sessions in the afternoon. And then finally, we are closing in the evening, having a very nice gala dinner accompanied by classical music. I understand and I'm very well aware of the fact that every participant here in the audience, including all the panelists, including the guest speakers, and in particular the annual co-chairs and term chairs, have already spent a tremendous amount of time and effort in advance and for the preparation of this event. And again, on behalf of the G20Y Association, I would like to thank each and all of you individually and collectively for all what you have been doing yet at this point in time in order to get ready for this summit and also what you are going to do because uh, eventually it's you, the audience, who shape the event, who provide quality in the process and provide quality of the output. And the G20Y Association is nothing but a vehicle and a framework to allow us, us meaning all of us, to work together over a couple of days uh, to come up with quality output in regards to what we really want to accomplish. With that as a background, let me briefly summarize what, summarize what the G20Y Summit really stands for. The G20Y Summit has been organized by the Swiss-based G20Y Association for a couple of years, and it is an independent and very important and politically independent organization, which is a not-for-profit organization and has its headquarter in Geneva. And the vision of the G20Y Summit is to jointly develop and share innovative and creative ideas and visions in regards to important and policy relevant matters on the international agenda, various relevant institutions and organizations, and to come up with impactful recommendations to the extent possible. I mentioned a moment ago that the G20Y Association is completely independent and the summit remains independent. However, the annual recommendations of which all of you are going to be part of for 2015 are being disseminated across the world and shared with the offices of the heads of states and international organizations and institutions such as IMF, World Bank, United Nations, Financial Stability Board, European Commission, Basel, uh, Committee on Banking Supervision, uh, just to name a few. Now, let me turn now to our first agenda item, and I can tell you I am and we are 
all extremely honored and grateful welcoming our keynote speaker, Mr. Franck Ribou, who is the chairman of the board of directors of Danone. Danone is a French-based multinational food products public company doing business across the globe with more than 20 billion euro in revenue, more than 100,000 employees, and ranked in leading social responsibility indices. Mr. Ribou also serves and has served on various boards for a variety of prestigious companies, including Renault, Rolex, Lacoste, the Consumer Goods Forum, and many more. So again, please join me welcoming our keynote speaker, Mr. Frank Ribou, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the NON. <clears throat> So I'm not going to make a big speech or big presentation. First of all, because we just have uh, 50 minutes. And um, the first thing I would like to say is uh, to welcome you in this hotel, because perhaps you don't know, but this hotel belongs to this uh, stupid food company. Why do we have an hotel? It's a long history. Uh, but basically, in this city, because Avion is not only the, the brand, the water brand, it's also the city, as you can see. And uh, basically, we don't want anybody else speak about Avion. So we control the golf course, we control the hotel, we control the casino, we control the spa. The only thing we didn't control is a politician guy in the, in, the, in the city, the mayor. Having said that, you have to know that in this hotel, many things happen. And uh, your organization told me that you are the most clever people of the world. Congratulations. Uh, I'm definitely less clever than you. But in the next week, for example, in the room beside you, we'll have, uh, for some of you, some of your, of your CEOs, because we will have the best German CEOs, the most, 20, the most important 20 CEOs of Germany, and the most important CEO of France. This meeting is there since now 25 years. We start with an association between Siemens and uh, Danone and Mercedes to organize it. Nobody knows, but we got there, Mr. Mr. Holland, Mr. Mitterrand, and the same on the, on the German side, to speak about the same topics than you. And I just want to say at the beginning that congratulations for the topic you choose, especially the food one. <laughs> But there are, there are the topics which are going to change the world in the future. So the idea is for you to exchange and to benchmark on these topics and to listen to people. But for me, the most important is you have to be sure why are you talking about these topics? Is it to make more money? Wrong answer. Is it to be more efficient? Wrong answer. Is it to really build the future of the world? Right answer. So you have to really imagine why are you going to discuss and listen all these uh, technical people, perhaps even more clever than you. Uh, but you have to understand why you want to find solution to this subject. More than the German and the French, we have the, G, the G8, not the G20Y, but the G8, the real one with Mr. Bush and all these people in this room beside. And as a company, every year, we have the 180, 190 general manager of, of every business unit of Danone every year coming here during three days just to discuss about the future and the strategy of the company. As you can see, the world, I think every generation is seeing that the world is becoming crazy. Uh, I confirm. I think I, sta I start as a chairman and a CEO, because perhaps you don't know, but last year I was still the CEO of this company. Perhaps I can explain why I decide to change the, co the governance of the group, which will help you to understand how we deal with the future in this company. But when I start to be the CEO of this company, I can tell you that the difficulties were not the same than now. There is not one day 
we don't have one trouble somewhere. And when I'm saying one trouble, it is just the first name, as we said in French, huh? because it's 10 troubles per day. Could be uh, seasonality, could be the price of milk, could be uh, the retail, could be a politi political issue. And the way we decide to deal with all this risk on top of the organization was to spread the business of Danone all over the world. So we didn't go all over the world to develop the top line. Obviously, that was important for us. First of all, we refocused the company on four businesses, no more, for management reason. Obviously, we can keep, just to give you an example, I sold with Emmanuel Faber, the new CEO of the company, 60% of the turnover of the company the first 10 years. Why? Because we want to focus on four businesses where we can speak about health, because health is the mission of our company. Bring health through food, but much more important, to the maxim maximum number of people. Bring health through food is basic. But the constraints we fixed to the company was to the maximum number of people. Because when you are in uh, Bangladesh and you have people having two euros per day to live, if your target is to bring health to the maximum number of people, you have to find business solution to give an answer to the people having two euros per day. And we didn't find the solution. At the end, we find one because we were very lucky to meet a guy called Mohamed Yunus, Nobel Prize, but at this time he was not the Nobel Prize. And he, speak, he spoke to me about the Grameen Bank and the microcredit, and I spoke to him about our strategy we call uh, afford, afford Valuity Food. That was a contraction of affordability and margin. Afford Valuity means nothing huh, for the English speaker, but I'm French, so I can use it. And the idea was how to make money, but having a, the right product proposition for the poor people. And at the end, we build a GV together. And now this GV <coughs> has two factories in Bangladesh, and we open many, many of them in all over the world in the developing country. Is it good for the shareholder? Basically, no, because the margin are not at the same level than the margin we can have in another country. But we will never drive our company because of finance. Never. We are sure that we can get a return, perhaps not a financial one at the same level, even if we are not losing money because it's a, we are making profit. But I'm, there is people from Schneider huh, in, the, in the room. Who is from Schneider? You are from Schneider. So I have a big discussion with your boss, Jean Pascal, and you are with us now. And we pay less what we buy to Schneider, but they learn with us because we have to invent new business solution, new product solution, new distribution solution, new how to take care of the garbage because there is no peop, nobody in Bangladesh taking your uh, cup of uh, plastic cup. So we just develop an, a, a biodegradable plastic cup for Bangladesh. Doing this, we connect ourselves to Chinese producer, and so on and so on. So you can, you can really imagine, and it's, it's really my message today. If you look at, you are going to face difficulties in the future, everything is going to change. Please, think differently. Don't look at just your PNL. Just imagine you can have another return than the financial one. Another example? how to attract the talent of tomorrow. We have the discussion this morning during our breakfast. <clears throat> talent will come from everywhere. Why? Because there is something everybody knows, e-learnings. I am on the board of the Ecole Polytechnique of Lausanne. You will have some a teacher from this school just after me. And they develop an incredible business just to connect the African people or even the American one to we teach through internet with the teacher of the school. 
I'm sure you did, all of you, you did wonderful university and MBA. And, but these people in Africa or whatever, they have the same brain than you. Huh? Statistically, we will find the same number of very clever people in this country. The only difference, they don't have the chance to get the friction you got when you were young. Because as I said to your organization, you have young, but you are not so young. You are old. I can say that, I'm, I'm going to turn 60. But you are not young. What does it mean young today? Look at sports, we are talking about sports. Look at golf. In the 10, year, 10 years ago, you are a good golfer when you reach 28, 30, 32 years old. Jordan Spieth is 21. He was playing the Avion Junior Cup seven years ago when he was, when he was 14. So you are not young. At the end, don't worry, young means nothing. I feel very young. So it's not a question of age, it's a question of brain. It's a question of how to look at the future. You have, to, you have three categories, or three categories of people, three categories of company. They look at to what happened today, say, no, it's not, that will not, that will not continue like this. You have another category, say, how could we change? But they don't know. And you are the one who change. And we have to be part of this one. And again, I come back to my example about Bangladesh and Mohammed Yunus. This guy help us to transform and to adapt our company to the future. Because they are the future. France is not the future. We have a future, but they are not going to transform us because we are not creative. But people in Bangladesh, they want to they want to eat, they want to have good food, they want to, they have to reinvent their country. Look at the technology. Who is the first continent? Which continent is in advance in terms of uh, how to pay with your mobile? Is it the US? Is it Japan? Is it Korea? Is it Europe? No, Africa. Because in technology, when you are late, you are in advance, always. I don't know if you can understand that in English. If you are late, you are in advance. Because the technology is going so fast that if you wait, you will benefit from the last technology. In France, we were very lucky. We get the, I even forget the name, the, the Minitel. And because of the Minitel, we are late with the mobile. In Africa, they jump directly to the new technology. So. The real question for us is how to adapt ourselves to the future. You will have a lot of people, I'm sorry for people working in McKinsey or Pricewaterhouse or whatever, or Arthur Anderson, and they will, they will try to explain to you the future. I hope that will be not too long, otherwise that will cost you a lot of money. But um, no, your people within your company means yourself. Your job is to understand the future. But you will not understand the future just through finance, economics, organization. And uh, I'm used to say that the most important, and I will conclude on that and get questions if you have questions, the most important is going to be the management. How are you going to manage the people? And more you are going on the top of the organization, less important your competence are. You don't have to be competent. But you have to be sure you can bring an answer to your people to the question they have every morning, why I am waking up and why I am going to work and to do what. If it is just for the bonus system, your company is dead. Especially with, sorry, the real young generation, those who have 20 years, 25 years old, they want to save the world. They are Superman. They are thinking about charity. And you have to give them sense every morning, which is not so easy. Trust me, it's, and I'm sure you have also this experience in your companies, it's not so easy. Even us with brand, look at advertising. If we continue to advertise our brand on television, we are dead. Obviously, we have to go to internet and we have to ask to a community to speak about us, how to leverage this community. You will not leverage the community just with your quarter result. Perhaps in some countries, 
not all over the world. And the future is in this part of the world, the new one. The growth will come from there, and we need growth. And if you look at the businesses, all of them are going to change. All of them. Even the food business. I just, two, one year ago, I got my first appointment with Amazon, with the CEO of Amazon. Not about product like textile or whatever, no. The fresh dairy product. And to deliver fresh dairy product is not so easy because you need the cold chain. So people are going to buy yogurt in Amazon one day. It's already the case. So I can say, oh, very small. That will... No, 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 no. If I am a good manager, I have to look at the future about that. Organic food. What is the future of organic food? Oh, easy answer. Nothing more than 4%. I don't think so. That will grow, and perhaps we will add one brand 4%, another brand 4%, another one 4%, but at the end I am going to lose 10%. When you look at that, the share of the company will decline 10% because uh, we miss the targets. We plan to deliver 4.5% top line growth. Sorry, we are 4.3. Bullshit. Bullshit. Short term. So how, how you can embark all your stakeholders, all of them, including the shareholder, in the future, you have to be courageous. You have to, be <clears throat> you have to trust in what you are doing, and you have to explain to them, listen, in Danone, as you said, we have a very strong concept called dual project, social and economic. We are convinced we can't have economic results if we are not taking care of the social. Social means relation with people, but also environmental issue, and vice versa. Huh? I explain that to the shareholder. And when we decide to create specific funds like uh, Danon Communities. Danon Communities is the last step of the association we have with Mohamed Yunus. We took money to the shareholder to create a fund to develop social business all over the world. But I, I, took the, I take the money from the benefit. Huh? I ask to the shareholder to vote on that at the General Assembly. I was not obliged to do that. As a CEO and chairman, I can do it. I can decide with the board but I want to embark the shareholder with me. And the result of the vote was much more than for my salary. That was 99.8% 99 yes. I'm not naïf. They vote like this because we deliver the result. If we didn't deliver the result, they will not vote. So I'm leveraging this social strategy to tell to my people if you want to continue to work like this, if you are convinced that we will have no result if we don't have the social progress with us, you have to deliver the result. So we get our freedom because we deliver the financial result. So that's the way we manage people in Danone. And, uh, and the good news for me and for you is I will uh, ask some of our people to join your group because I think it's, we, we are not thinking we are different. It's even, we are even more proud than that. We are thinking we are unique. So it's even much more important. But I think it's important we have talented people, part of your group, because honestly, we didn't do the existence of your group before you, you came here, you come here. And uh, first of all, thanks to come here. It's a good choice. <laughs> Financially speaking, it's a good choice for us. <laughs> And on top of that, you will see there is a special ambience in this place. I know it's difficult to come, but that's the reason why there is a specific ambience. Because we can capture you. Thank you, and if you have questions, I will uh, answer, if I know the answer, obviously. Yeah, so uh, th thank you very much. Uh, now we have reserved maybe 20 minutes or so uh, a Q&A session. Uh, so I would invite you now to now ask you a work. question. <laughs> ask a question uh, for Mr. Ribou, which you would like to better understand based on his prepared remarks, so don't be shy. 
We are... Don't worry if you don't have no problem. <laughs> so don't be shy. Just briefly stand up. There is one in the first row. You speak low and slowly because I don't hear very well. I will try my best. Thank you so much uh, for the welcome speech. I'm really impressed, especially by the thought of dual product with social and econo economic value, which is the real drive for the future challenges. So in this way, uh, what do you consider to be the major challenges for the future? <laughs> and um, what challenges the big companies will face in the near one? You know, I told you I changed uh, the governance of the group last year, one year ago. And I got a lot of questions about uh, why I did that. I was just 58, 59. It's true that normally, if you look at the average, people are becoming CEO when the average must be in the classic corporation size of Danone, let's say 50, 55. I was nominated when I was 40. So it means there is 20. I was a CEO during 20 years. And I decided to do that for many reasons, personal one and business one, but many reasons. And one of them was the question you ask. What are the main challenge? Because, you know, I need more than 20 minutes. When you are driving a company like Danone, the major challenge could be a long-term challenge, but it could be also a, a disaster. You have, uh, you know, when I took the decision, we were in trouble with our supplier from New Zealand called Fonterra, because they, they, they explained they have a problem with the milk powder they deliver to us. We used to have a company, 600 million euros, milk infant formula in China, switching to 100 within three days. This is the main challenge. For me, the main challenge is what do we learn from the day-to-day -day challenge? It's easy to, for us to say with this example, oh, it's not our fault, it's a supplier. And we change the supplier. No, not true. The organization, the compliance was not the right one. Means because of financial things, we accept things from our supplier we don't have to accept. So the next challenge for us, one of the, especially in the food business, food safety, food security is going to be a very important challenge for us. In the same time, um, it's a question of, you can't answer to that kind of question strategically if you are short term. And we decide with Emmanuel at this time to work, but not, but not top down, but bottom up. So we have a huge process in our organization to ask to the Danoners, because we call them the Danoners, means let's say 200 top manager. What do you want to do with Danone year 2020? And we learned that we say we have to be Chinese. The Chinese, they are thinking 50 years in front or 100 years in front. That's the reason why they are stronger than us. So we tried to do the same exercise in Danone. And we bring everything. And at the end, I said, I'm, I'm 58, I'm 59. You are not thinking the same way when you are 40 than when you are 58, 59. And I said, oh, OK, we were, I need more time. I need, I need to be more free to think about the challenge, even if I am already very free. Don't worry about that. I'm not really listening to what people are thinking about myself. I don't care. I take care, but I don't care. But I really think I need, I need to create a, a space between the day to day and the future to help Emmanuel and the team to think about the future. So the challenges are when you are in the food business, they are huge. And we are a small company. You said 20 million euros, it's a little bit more, I think, it's 22, 23. Yeah, but we need this one. <laughs> so in dollars, no, now it's the same. Uh, in Swiss franc, no, it's the same also. So uh, we, we, we are a small company. We are a real strategic uh, question about our size. 
We have our friend just on the other lake, of, on the other side of the lake. I was there to visit uh, Peter Brabeck this week. Nestle, Nestle is basically 100. We are 21. Very strong where we are, but the size is 21. Um, if you look at who, what are the, the, which is a disaster for me, what are the fashionable for the financial community? What are the financial, the, the, the fas, fashion, fa, fashionable, sorry, company in the food business? There is one, I'm sure some of you know, called 3G, the Brazilian one. You know the brand. They control the beer market. Another Bush, Interbrew. They just took over a, a, a grocery food company in the US called Heinz with the help of Warren Buffett. They are very fashionable. They took over companies with no growth, with a lot of uh, around uh, their body, 10% saving. They fire the pe people like you. They fire them. And they are looking to the N minus two. They don't give the salary of the guy who they just fired. They give a bonus if they deliver the savings within six months. It's not a company for me. Because are, we will see the next step, which is to develop the top line. So the big challenge for me, on top of everything, because I don't want to be the classic answer, is how to develop the top line. Because the best way to improve the margin is to develop the top line with that value product. If you understand that, you put the focus on research, development, innovation, which is not always a breakthrough innovation. Because if you look at, for example, the consumption of dairy product in the world, in my country, it's 32 kilos per year per capita. In the US, it's seven country, uh, seven kilos, sorry. Even, I'm not sure they understand why they consume dairy product. It's not a joke, it's true. Huh? Is it breakfast? Is it lunch? Is it end of meal, beginning? I don't know. China is three kilos. So an innovation we have in France, we launch in China, could be a real breakthrough innovation for this country. So top line growth and organization. How, how are we going to organize our company? You know, I come back to this 3G example. You think seriously that Nestle can work like this company? No. The danger is because they are fashionable, big corporation will try to work like them, but we can't. So the most important for me is not to look at the future, is to understand the history of my company, the DNA of my company, and to protect the DNA of my company, which not mean not change, but how to build on the DNA, the double project I was talking about. Where do we come from? The history of Danone. How do we build this company? And as you know, I'm in a good place to explain that because I know quite well the guy who was before me. That was my father. Even if it is not a family company, Emmanuel Faber is the third CEO of this company for the last 40 years. And I think sustainability in management is also very important. You just have to accept that not everybody is wonderful. You have quality and you have no quality. You have to build on the quality and put the right people around if they are not good everywhere. But if they are very bad, OK, you have to fire them within five minutes. That's the way I pilot the, the company. And human being, human resource, management, organization are for me the main challenge. I can speak about Daesh, I can speak about China and the crisis, I can speak about the currency, I can speak about the uh, political situation in uh, Argentina, which is a disaster. Uh, I can have many other examples. No, I'm not talking about France at the time being. Uh, even if we are entering a period of time with the election, so it's going to be worse. Uh, but no, this, this is classic life. This is day-to-day -day life. 
But my responsibility and the responsibility, you know, when I ask Emmanuel if he wants to become the CEO of the company, because that's the way we've, we did. Huh? Emmanuel, do you want to become the CEO of the company? Normally, everybody answer, yes, 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 yes. Emmanuel said, no, Frank, I need two weeks. And I'm working with him in the company since 20 years. He came back and he said to me, Frank, my answer is not yes. My answer is not no. My answer is I engage myself. This is what I expect from this guy. I just leverage a little bit your question. <laughs> Okay, uh, that was a very I will good try to be shorter response. on the next one. Next question, lady here. Um, good morning. I'm part of the Food Security Committee. And I'm very excited to work on this topic over the next couple of days. And I was very excited by your speech, but I thought, what do we do about the impact of the work here? So I thought I will use you as a, um, a maybe giver of advice. Do you have any advice for the Food Security Committee how to maximize the impact that we can have? No, as, as I said to you, you are, more you are more clever than me, so you, you are not enough young to get advice, honestly. So be confident. So what are you going to do with your, what you are going to discuss? I know that in all these organizations, the real question is, we have to produce a paper, we will give that to the politicians, this and this and that. Nice, very nice. Don't worry, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. So you are satisfied. But for me, the most important is what you, as a human being, as a woman, you are going to get from the friction you will have during these days between yourself. You are going to produce a paper, okay, fine. You know, they are doing the same in Davos. I was two times in my life in Davos. Ah, I'm very well known not to be very engaged in that kind of organization. But they will not use. No, no, it's not true. They have many people with a brain like this around them, so don't worry. They will not listen, but you do your job, so it's okay. But the most important for me is you are in a position to impact. The only thing is you want to impact the world organizations. No, start to impact around you. You have responsibility, you have teams around you, you have a decision to take. So first of all, be sure you respect what you discuss here. Your boss does not want to do what you want. Try to convince him and be courageous. Change, change the boss. No, I'm serious. You know, you, you really think you can impact the, 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 the I don't know, uh, uh, world organization? They can nourish from your paper, clear, but you will not impact them. I don't trust that. So for me, and I said that during the breakfast, you know what is the best news for me in this new world? You continue to spend time together. Because you can do that with internet and video conference and behind your screen, nobody knows. No, the real good thing is friction. So don't work a lot. Take more time to discuss on the terrace, all together. This is more important than to listen to stupid people like me. Because you have the idea, you know, you have already the friction. Just to benchmark will enrich the discussion because of your experience. But the way also you are going, because I'm sure you listen to me one way, some people here listen to me another way, some people say, oh, this is stupid, uh, 10 minutes is over. This is, you have to, this, that, that's the subject you have to discuss. Because you are not going to save the world by producing a paper you can, you can launch to, in Geneva, you have uh, one world organization every quarter, so every, every quarter of street. So, no, that, that, that's the only advice. You benchmark and you try, you start already to change around you. Because if you, you know, it, that, that will impact, which is exactly what I think from big corporations like Danone. 
I discussed a lot with Nestle and Unilever and PepsiCo and Coke and the other on food safety, on organization, and uh, even with the retailer we discussed. Can you imagine? Look at what happened just now. Price of milk, price of pork. Nobody will find the solution if we are not working together. Because it's true that we need farmers making profit with the milk we buy to them. And it's true that with the price we pay to, today, they are not making profit. So we have to help them to understand how could we help them to bring efficiency? How we can stop the Credit Agricole to sell to them the brand new tractor they don't need? And so on and so on. How could we convince the government to reduce the, 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 charge, the tax they have on everything? But you can see it's a question of when you know that if you look at on the world at the world level, I'm sure you don't know that 70% of the milk producer are family producer, family farm, with an average of five cows. So if you are talking to Fonterra, okay, it's even stronger than the New Zealand uh, state. But 70% on the on the earth is produced by family farmers, and we just create a, a farm with an American company, a family one, very close to Danone in terms of DNA. Everybody knows, called Mars, you know, Bounty, MMNs, you know. So the Mars, controlled by a family, which is somewhere quite important for us. And we just create a farm to help family farmer. Is it part of our PNL? Is it part of our job? No. So I have to explain that. Or oh, now Emmanuel has to explain that, which was the reason I stopped also. <laughs> <laughs> has to explain that, yes, it's important. If you look at the future, it's important that Danone invest beside the family farmer. If you are looking the result quarter per quarter, that will take sometimes you understand, especially when Chinese is going down. Okay, uh, we have one more question, a gentleman here in the middle. Could somebody of you please bring the mic to the gentleman? Um, thank you for the speech. And you gave a very impressive example when you said we talked to our um, shareholders and convinced them that uh, social responsibility and looking to the future is very important. But I'm, we I'm not sure I convinced them. Huh? <laughs> yeah, no, the point was I wanted to come to that point. You said, but at the same time, we always delivered results. I'm coming from the banking industry, and there's a kind of problem. We have a problem <laughs> to deliver financial results, the top line, but at the same time, we have to invest into the future, one like digitalization and all these things. And at the same time, we are not as stable in our management as you described it. I mean, I'm from Deutsche Bank. You might, you might know that we had a lot of changes in management. So how- Which bank is it? It's Deutsche Bank. Oh, Deutsche Bank. So the question is how to come to this situation to convince the stakeholders, especially the shareholders, that we have to go through a longer period with no good financial results, but even, you know, we have to do it to invest into the future. And I fear that it's very hard to look long term. Investors always think short term. Short. So do you have kind of idea how to <laughs> improve that? Uh, you have to be very good <laughs> to convince them. <laughs> That, uh, yeah, it, uh, you know, it's difficult for me to answer because it's really linked not to the quality of your top manager, but to the ability they have to be open, to listen to their people. And I know that it's, but it's not just in the financial system or the bank. And it's even more difficult in your business or in your industry, as you said. Because first of all, you have to know that few people consider that bank or finance is an industry, which is true. So I think the first, if I was at the head of a bank, the first thing I will do in terms of advertising or 
was to, will be to explain as a corporation that we are in an industry. We are not bad. We are an industry, and as every industry, we need to make we need to make profit. The question the question is not to make profit or not. We have to make profit, even if we have a social responsibility, and all of us we have. Without any profit, we will not deliver the social target we fix to the company or the environmental target we fix for the company. But the first thing for me is we have to trust in what we are saying. Environmental issue, if we think it's important, we must have target. We must achieve the target means we must invest. We must spend capex to reach target. In the bank system, it's even more difficult because in 2008 and just after, you became totally crazy because, because of the short term, because of the cupidity. I don't know how to say that in English, but I think it's not far. Uh, you, all the financial system became totally crazy. And I think you forgot that you are an industry. But the role of an industry is not to develop the margin. We need the margin to develop the industry. That's the reason why I want to focus on the top line. To develop margin short term, it's, so, it's easy. When, you know, I remember when I was used to make this wonderful roadshow in the Deutsche Bank, for example, I have to justify myself because the evolution of the margin was 10 basis points lower than expected. But nobody makes the calculation. I am an engineer. I'm coming from the Ecole Polytechnique, as I said. No. So you make the calculation for a company like Danone. What is it 10 basis, 10 basis point in absolute value? In basis point, 10. Whoa! But in absolute value, I don't know, even 20 million, 10 million? We spend 800 million in advertising. So if you want, I cut during 10 years, like a saucisson, one slice. At the end, I will have no more advertising, and I will have no more top line growth and no innovation. So it's stupid. But if I'm just focusing on how to convince the financial community to invest on the Danone share, I cut 10 million advertising, and 10 million, and 10 million, on 800 million, that will take time before you even if you are very clever, you, you understand I cut the advertising campaign. So, you know, to answer directly to your question, again, it's a question of courage. Have you the courage to tell to your boss, we are going in the wrong direction? As we said in French, we go in the mur, in the wall. Have you done that? You! You, with your direct report, yes, no. It's something we promote in Danone. We want our people saying to us we are wrong. Because it's not because you are boss of the company that you are right. I don't think that. And more and more with the young generation, you will have to animate or develop the talent like this. That's the reason why I'm still very optimistic. Because the answer to your question is, don't worry. They will be obliged to change, or they will die. If you discuss with people creating this uh, new platform to rent your apartment or to travel or whatever, you know how they decide. They are like Robin des Bois. Huh? They look at the businesses which are not going to react, big one, and they invent something. And they destroy your business because you can't react. Because they have the technology now. The technology is very affordable. So they, they are going to transform all the businesses. So don't worry. Your hierarchy is going to see that. The question is how long they will take to change. That will, that will be difficult for some of them. I am on the board of Reno, the car maker. And uh, you know who is, which company is a company which invests the most, the, the biggest amount of money around car business. 
Is it Audi, Volkswagen, uh, Renault, Google? That's all. So the strategic question for a car maker is the size. Because whatever Google is going to develop, they need the support. So they need the number of cars to reduce the cost. So if you are producing one million cars, you have no future. If you are producing six million cars, you have a future. You can negotiate with, with Google. You know, everybody is talking about strategy. My father was used to explain to me, Frank, strategy is something you explain after. Like this, you are always right. <laughs> and it's true. A company, you take decision because you are under pressure or because you preempt the danger, but not because you can understand the future. Look at, look at Tesla and the guy, I forget the name. It's incredible. The guy is better than all the European companies sending a rocket in the, in the sky. And after that, he developed Tesla. And now he's developing the battery. So strategy is very often, you have your own strategy. That's the reason why I'm always optimistic. But it's true that it's going to change. Everything is going to change. Even at the university. Look at the economic model of the best university in the US with these e-learnings. Where are they making their money? I think they are in danger. Because the e-learning will develop new resources for the other one. And that will destroy some of them they have now. Everything is going to change. So the real question you have to ask to your... In Danone, we have a, a specific, um, uh, uh, let's say, organization. We call it OP, means Objective Preliminary, Preliminary Objective. And we ask to the general manager of the business unit, not the guy in charge of the, of the region, not the guy in charge of the European zone. This is just connection. We are talking about the general manager of the business unit in the different countries, exactly like you, because you are very rich, because you are coming from everywhere. But in our organization, we have people coming from everywhere and driven companies in Africa, in Latin America. So we have to organize the connection between themselves, not through internet, with that kind of meeting within, within our organization. And, uh, they have to come and they present their strategy. You are the general manager of uh, Danone Dairy Product in France. What do you want to do with your company within the next 10 years? So it's not coming from me. It's coming from the guy in charge of the business on a day-to-day -day basis. This can be an idea to convince your hierarchy. Because if you want to convince them to change, you will not succeed. So find something else to make them in a position to understand. It's a free advice. <laughs> OK. okay. Uh, again, thanks you so much, Mr. Ribou, for I have to go back. <laughs> joining us as a keynote no? speaker today. Now I would like to ask the president of the G20 Buy Association to provide you a little gift. Uh, oh. I will give it to my With wife. We want to <laughs> give it to your wife. Yeah, express our appreciation for coming. And please, uh, Thank you. thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Um, it was great to have you here. I see you next year. Yes, we all see you next year. Yes. <laughs>